Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Outdoor education continues to be an important component of environmental education in my great riding of Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Yep. And so I rise in the House today to pay tribute to the group of forward looking local educators who made this happen 45 years ago when they rallied around their idea that children would benefit from a far greater exposure to nature. In 1973, they turned their belief into action by persuading the then Education Board to purchase a 320 acre farm near Oliphant which at the time consisted of an old farmhouse and a great barn and frontage on two lakes. This brilliant decision is why 2,000 students continue to have the opportunity to experience the great outdoors surrounded by UNESCO Biosphere Reserve each year in my riding. Since its creation 45 years ago, the Blue Water Outdoor Education Centre is today recognized as foremost in the province. Of course, the program would not have been possible without the people behind the Blue Water Outdoor Education Foundation. Yep. The foundation created a trust with the sole objective of sustainable child environmental education in the outdoors. Thanks to them, we have new dining and sleeping accommodations, as well as a fully-fledged observatory in conjunction with the local Astro Astronomical Society. Most importantly, the Outdoor Centre's sustainability into the future cannot be secured without the support of the Blue Water District School Board. With more children spending time in front of the screens, they average 50 hours each week, outdoor education programs are more important than ever, as it's when they get it to unplug and connect with nature and learn to care for the environment. I invite the members to join me in congratulating my community on the 45th anniversary of the Blue Water Outdoor Education Program yes. and encouraging local school board to support the program and to, ensure, and to ensure this valuable resource is sustainable. I would like to thank all of the board of directors, past, present, and future, and all the people who financially support this wonderful program. Mr. Speaker, thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Further member statement, the member from Toronto Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I have a request to the Minister of Government and Serv sorry, Minister of Government and Consumer Services for action. A relatively new condo building in my riding at 1190 Dundas Street East has severe elevator concerns and a lack of service from Otis Elevators. Their latest set of elevator problems began in November of 2017. One elevator had issues requiring repair, and repair was attempted but failed. The residents of the condo were promised repairs in January. That was moved to February, March, April. They have three elevators, speaker. Two go to the 12th floor. One only goes to the ninth floor. The second 12th floor elevator was taken out of service around Easter. Condo was without both 12th floor elevators for about a week. The minister knows that legislation is coming, but people with elevators in their buildings need assistance now. Otis gives a time frame for repairs and repeatedly fails to meet their deadlines. The big four elevator companies have a monopoly, but can't seem to keep parts in stock and have issue with relatively new devices. People have a right to the services that they pay for, and they need to have the government backing them. Speaker, I'm asking the minister to contact Otis today and demand that they put things right. Thank you, Speaker. No further member statements. The member from Mississauga, Arendelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As you are aware, I have decided not to seek re-election and 15 years have passed much quicker than I could have ever expected. Mr. Speaker, MPPs are generally offered an opportunity to make a maiden statement when they are newly elected. Unfortunately, I missed that opportunity. In turn, my statement this afternoon will serve both as my maiden as, a, as well as my last statement in the House. Since being elected in 2003, the wonderful colleagues at the legislature have humbled me, who have devoted themselves to our province and its success. They deserve our very sincere gratitude. I am especially thankful to our former leader and Premier Dalton McGuinty for providing me with an opportunity of lifetime to serve in the interior cabinet for a better part of 10 years. This was a great learning experience and a personal highlight. During my time in Cabinet, I had the pleasure of working with the extremely dedicated members of our Executive Council, including our current Premier, as well as the staff of various ministries. My own staff provided me with solid advice and inspiration every single day. No matter what challenges we faced, I was always supremely confident in their abilities and impressed with their tireless enthusiasm to each and every staff member that have had the honor 
that I have had the honor of working with, I will forever be indebted. As my first foray into public service, I was fortunate to serve as a board member of the Crad Valley Hospital and oversee the finances and business operation of the Peel District School Board. It is there that I became aware of how critically underfunded our schools and hospitals were. And this became a driving force for me in my four election campaigns. Of all that our government has accomplished in the last four terms, I am most proud of the progressive work that has been done in the arenas of education and health care to increase funding for our most in-need schools and hospitals. Mr. Speaker, it has been a true honor and a privilege to represent my constituents as their elected representatives for four consecutive terms. I want to thank each and every one of them for their support, guidance, and constructive feedback. Most importantly, my very sincere thanks to my family and especially my late parents, as none of us can do this job without the encouragement of our loved ones. Words cannot describe the pride I feel in having raised two wonderful daughters who were born and raised in this province and have worked hard to achieve success in their professional and personal pursuits. I would also like to thank my wife for, their steadfast, for her steadfast and unwavering support. We have a new addition in our family, my adorable grandson, who I look forward to spending time with after June 7th. To my fellow MPPs, current and former, thank you for supporting teaching and challenging me. It has been a pleasure working alongside with you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, as well for your dedication and outstanding service to Interior and our legislature. I concur with a lot of the observations that you have recently made about the changing role of MPPs. Partisanship often clouds our decision making and thinking. The best ideas, however, no matter where they come from, should be incorporated into our policies. Let me take this final moment to offer my very best wishes to my colleagues who are running in the upcoming election and thank the others, and there are quite few of them, who have chosen to step down for their years of contribution to our great province. No matter the outcome on June the 7th. Let us keep in mind that our common goals remain the same, to continue bettering our province for all Ontarians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very short maiden speech, but that's okay. <laughs> Further member statements, the member from Perth, Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, last week our local junior B team, the Listville Cyclones, made history by winning the Sutherland Cup. Last Tuesday, May the 1st, the Cyclones became the Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League champions. This is the team's first provincial title. Wow. They won 4-1 to one against the Caledonia Corvairs in front of a full house at the Steve Kerr Memorial Complex in Listwell. The next day, the boys celebrated with a parade through town. Talk about hometown hockey <laughs> pride. <laughs> Under team coach Jason Brooks, the Cyclones have had an amazing journey. Key to their success, hard work from every player. As coach Brooks told the Stratford Beacon Herald, it's a special group. I really can't explain it. They had a bond the last two seasons like I've never seen in a team before. The Cyclones also won the Cherry Cup last year and this year. Paul Lansick, who has been with the team for three seasons, said the Cherry Cup meant so much to us last year, and I think the difference was this year, it didn't feel like we were done when we had won it. It was a quick night, and we were right back to work. In other words, whatever we achieve, there's always room to improve, always room to work harder and even do better. That's a great lesson for all of us. Mr. Speaker, 
This is what teamwork is all about dedication and striving for excellence. Thank you, Speaker. Well done. Further member statements, the member from Nickel Belt. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to talk about privatization of public services and its effect it's having on communities in the Northeast, including in my riding of Nickel Belt. The Liberal government decided to sell off the cell service and uh, internet connectivity service to the private sector. In my riding, it was to Bell. Well, now Bell is threatening to remove its equipment. This would leave the community of Foliette and Ivanhoe Lake and surrounding businesses, outfitters, cottages, and people traveling through the area on Highway 101 without cell service or the internet. To quote the president of Pineland Contracting, Mr. René Blanchette, and I quote, I have 25 full-time employees plus another 25 full-time subcontractors and truckers who use, who use these services daily. The loss of these services put our safety in jeopardy, and we cannot function properly if these services are terminated by Bell Canada. Speaker, business needs stability to operate, but in Kathleen Wynne's Ontario, they can lose the tool they need in the blink of an eye. The people of Ontario paid to have the tower built, Mr. Speaker, in the name of increased access for people of the North. However, it's about to turn on us, and we're about to lose it. I'd like to quote from the chairman of the CRTC, Jean-Pierre Blais, who states, access to broadband internet service is vital and essential to life and success. That's essential to the life and success of the businesses, the students, the senior, and all residents of Foliette and Ivanhoe Lake. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Scarborough Centre. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I rise today to speak as MPP for Scarborough Centre for the final time in this Ontario legislature. Not to right. some that might be sad, to others <laughs> they may be happy. There's some smiles I see in that legislature. To this day, Mr. Speaker, I, I find it hard to believe that this scrappy little kid from Scarborough somehow <laughs> made it here and was able to survive in this place for 15 years after serving for nine years on Toronto City Council as a, as a councillor from Scarborough. I, I almost find it unbelievable that, that, uh, that I, I could have uh, achieved this kind of uh, a privilege. And I have been privileged to serve uh, for over a decade in, in cabinet, uh, in the cabinet of two great, uh, great Ontario premiers, former Premier Dalton McGuinty and, of course, uh, Premier Kathleen Wynne. Really, that, it's been the honour of my life to serve under their leadership and, and observe firsthand the incredible commitment and passion that both of those individuals have had for making life better for Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, it's been an honour to serve with you, uh, someone who I consider to be one of the most accomplished speakers that I've observed, and I've been in this business for 30 years. I was here during the Peterson days. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you've done a phenomenal job keeping decorum in this place. Your love of this place, I think, comes through in the work that you've done, and you've done a great service to the people of Ontario, keeping the legislature relevant. Thank you. And I guess I'll stop there. Keep going. Keep going. Keep, keep going. going. He liked. He liked. He wants me to keep going. But Mr. Speaker, more, more, more than anything at all, I, I want to thank you for your friendship. You and I go way back. Uh, you were very much your words of wisdom to me in my early days in particular, I think really helped me get through those early days. So for that, sir, I thank you very, very much. I want to thank the hundreds of, of staff members that I've had the privilege to have on my own direct staff. And it's hard to believe that uh, after seven portfolios that you have so many, and often young people come through your offices. I think one of the best privileges that we have is to mentor some of those young people. And regardless of what side of the legislature you're on, you've all seen that talent come through. And, and to me, that gives me hope for a future more than anything else. So I want to thank them. I've been blown away by the level of talent that some of these, these young people that have, have worked for us all over the years have, uh, have shown. I want to thank the officers of the, of the legislature here today and all the thousands of public servants that I've had the privilege to work with. They do a phenomenal job for our province, and they also make life pleasant for us here. Uh, there are times when the hours get long, uh, but the folks here, they share those hours with us, and I want to thank you for making life not only bearable, but enjoyable for all of the members here. I want to, of course, thank my wife, Crystal, my sons, Kennedy and Jordan, my parents, uh, my family, for understanding how important this work has been to me through the years and never, ever complaining 
uh, while my responsibilities often took me away from them, or my attention wasn't there when it should have been because my mind was on what we're doing here rather than what it probably should have been at home. Finally, as I take my leave, I want to thank all of my colleagues, all the MPPs here in the Legislature from all sides of the House. One of the things I take a great deal of pride in is the fact that while I did my job as a loyal and committed Liberal MPP and, and minister, I was never truly a, a person that, that was partisan in nature. I always believed that, and I know I, I could be partisan in this place when I was told to be or when I had to be. <laughs> But you always knew that I had respect for every single member in this legislature. All of you worked very hard to get here. All of you deserve to be here. All of you are working extremely hard on behalf of the people of Ontario. And I want you to know that I've always valued that. I've respected the, the members in this legislature on all sides of the legislature and will always do that. To me, of all the things I've had the privilege to participate in, serving with each and every one of you has been the privilege of my life, and I want to thank you for that, and I want to wish all of you well in the next election campaign, and thank you for all the years of service that each and every one of you has given as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was going to let you go on for another 10 minutes if you were going to speak about me. <laughs> for, <laughs> in a good way, Bill. <laughs> Further member statements. The member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. First of all, it's a pleasure to stand today and congratulate all the retiring MPPs and, most importantly, thank them and their family for the public service that they have invested in Ontario. We won't forget what you've done to stand up on behalf of your constituents. Sincerely, thank you. And I'd also like to take this moment to talk to the constituents of Huron Bruce because I thank them for bringing their concerns to my attention so I could act on their behalf. For instance, Speaker, my motion to create more agri-food awareness in terms of the amazing careers that are out there is something that I feel so passionate about. In 2015, we had unanimous consent to move forward on this initiative, but unfortunately, I attended an AGM for Eggscape last week, and it was reported that there's been very little action to this date. High school majors, there's been work done, check mark on that, but we still have to work on making sure people are aware of the amazing jobs that exist in the agri-food industry. I'd also like to uh, raise awareness about a motion I just introduced last week that has gotten a lot of legs, and it's with regards to improving access for service dogs that are in training to support autistic children. Deanna Alan, you've been an amazing advocate. Thank you for that. And, Speaker, my bill that I introduced earlier this year on Great Lakes Awareness Day is now on the radar of the Great Lakes Legislative Caucus, and our colleagues on the American borders of our Great Lakes are now thinking about taking June 7th on and a, as an Awareness Day as well. So, and lastly, I'd like to thank the government for picking up on my motion, putting ticks on the map with the report that you came out with last week. The very first person I met in here in Bruce was Doris Sanders. She's a survivor of Lyme. We can't do enough. Thank you for taking my motion into consideration. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, member from Kingston in the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am thrilled to rise today in honour of the final member statement of the 41st Parliament. As I reflect on this term, I've had the privilege of delivering 74 member statements that were dedicated to causes, events, stories, and people who matter a great deal to me. Mr. Speaker, each and every sentence, second, and moment counts. It is in the public record forever. We should never take this for granted. We should also do our best to ensure that the words that we bring forward delivered with, are delivered with respect and dignity. And unfortunately, as we know, this does not always happen. Mr. Speaker, the nature of politics is such that discourse and debate is necessary. However, it is important to represent every constituent in the province for the sole reason of improving their lives. That is what, I, what politics is all about, after all, for me. I have a special place in my heart for Kingston and the Islands. Kingston is a place where history and innovation thrive. 
It is home to Canada's top hospitals, and we will soon see the new addition of a third crossing, a dream for many in Kingston and the Islands that has been a dream for 50 years, thanks to our government's investment of $60 million, as well $500 million investment in the Kingston Health Science Centres, which is another area that needed renovation, in some cases, for 50 years. Kingston is a place where people care about each other and work tirelessly to make their community a better place for all. This has and will continue to be the source of my daily inspiration. In closing, Mr. Speaker, it's been a pleasure to work with you. You have been such an inspiration. I thank you for your service to Ontario. I knew I had to say that to get a few extra seconds in. <laughs> and in closing, it has been an honour to work with each and every one of you on all sides of this House for this term particularly our clerk's table as well. Thank you so much to all of you. Good luck. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Miigwech. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And is this maybe the last time I, I will speak while you are in the chair? Let me take this opportunity to thank you for your service and wish you the best well, in your you retirement, if it is retirement. I rise today to welcome the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities to the great riding of Perry Sound, Muskoka. Starting on Wednesday, FANAM will be holding their annual conference at the Stocky Centre right at the harbour in Perry Sound. The theme of this conference is Leading the Way Through Innovation. Capascasing Mayor and FANAM President Al Spachek and his team have put together a very good agenda, including speakers on forestry, the Ring of Fire, transportation, economic development, and many other important issues facing Northern Ontario communities. Despite the great agenda, I do hope the de delegates find some time to get out and explore all that Perry Sound and area has to offer. There are great shops in the downtown, just a short walk from the Stock Centre, and plenty of good restaurants as well. On another municipal organization note, I want to congratulate Bracebridge Mayor Graydon Smith on being elected Chair of the Ontario Small Urban Municipalities Organization. Mayor Smith has been a great advocate for our community and for equal services in towns across Ontario. One only needs to look at the presentation he made to the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs during the pre budget consultations earlier this year about the need to review and change the funding formula for medium-sized hospitals in Ontario. Congratulations to Mayor Smith on your new position. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements.